A depressed Lisa is seen lying in the middle of an abandoned road. A car soon arrives and Lisa gets up. Hesitant at first, she accepts the ride and gets inside the car. The man introduces himself as Adam, a night watchman, remarking that it is the most tedious job. During their conversation, it is revealed that Lisa is dealing with the grief of losing her daughter, who would be turning nine today. On the radio, the reporter alerts the audience about a vicious killer wanted by the police and gives his description. Adam reaches to turn off the radio and Lisa notices the exact same cross mark on his hand as on the killers as described by the reporter. Before she can confront him, the car abruptly stops and everything goes black. Lisa wakes up in a tunnel-like chamber with no memory of how she got there. She is wearing a bodysuit and a glowing bracelet that she uses in a vain attempt to scrape the metal in hopes of escaping. Her screams and cries go in vain, and suddenly a circular passageway opens. With no other way out, she crawls inside and the entry shuts behind her. She continues to crawl forward in a desperate attempt to find an exit, but the opening at the end of the tunnel also closes, trapping her. She resorts to using a tight path to crawl towards an area that is lit in different colors. She crawls further in the tunnel while the floor starts to close in on her and manages to get out just in time before it squeezes her. Lisa lies in yet another tunnel, exhausted, and watches as the bracelet starts a countdown which alerts her to be in a safe space before the timer is over. While crawling further, she comes across a charred corpse wearing the same bracelet as her. She gathers the courage to remove it from her path and continues forward while there are only two minutes left on her bracelet. As she crawls further, she gets trapped again in the vent. Various laser lights enter through the walls as a safe space opens and Lisa crawls towards it. As soon as the countdown goes zero, a blaze of fire covers the entire vent while Lisa is saved through a glass door. When the fire dies out, the safe space pushes Lisa back into the vent where the ceiling starts closing in on her. She closes her eyes, begging for it to stop, and it stops right in time as the timer starts again. Lisa starts to cry out helplessness before pulling herself together and continuing forward on her back. She reaches a pool of water and drinks it before jumping inside to find yet another tunnel. As soon as she climbs it, the water floods the entire tunnel, bringing along a dead body. She swims through the water and reaches another passageway, where she lies exhausted. She suddenly hears a pleading voice and follows it eagerly to meet another survivor. As she crawls, the tunnel opens up to reveal an acid solution. Lisa carefully moves forward, but her knee ends up dipping into the acid as she screams in pain. She hears the man's voice again and suppresses her pain to continue following it. She finally finds the pleading man who is trapped on the other side of the tunnel with the same gate she was trapped in before. As her timer goes red, the gates in front of them open along with the safe space and both the man and Lisa rush towards it. Lisa manages to push the man away to take the space before the glass door slams on his hand. Upon looking closely, Lisa notices the cross tattooed on his hand and learns that the man is Adam, who seems to have been trapped longer than her. Soon, the fire engulfs Adam while Lisa passes out in fear. She awakens in a blue and white chamber where a weird skull appears from a hole and aids Lisa's wounds. The skull attaches a pipe to Lisa's suit that takes her to the car ride where she remembers her struggle with Adam before he stabbed her. The skull leaves and the safe space pushes Lisa out again. She notices some marks on Adam's hand behind his bracelet. But before she can understand them, a blade fan starts moving towards her. By now, she knows it cannot be good news and starts crawling away as the fan chops Adam's hand. She climbs to a vent above her, which is yet another long passage. 
Her problems only escalate as she witnesses a now charred Adam who follows her viciously as she crawls away from him. Adam disappears once Lisa gets to another vent and has to decide between the two passageways. Upon continuing further, she starts hearing her daughter's voice. At the end of the vent, Lisa reaches a room large enough to stand up. The walls play all the memories of her daughter, Nina, and she also witnesses her little girl climbing the window to grab a toy and falling to her death. Lisa cries in guilt that she was not there for her daughter. But her grief is interrupted by Adam crawling on the roof of the room and Lisa rushes to get into another vent. The room's ceiling starts closing in and Adam grabs Lisa's leg, but she manages to push away from him. As she continues crawling, followed by Adam, she notices that the tunnel is further equipped with barbed wire. On the other side of the wires, there is an open sky. But her bracelet gets red again and the tunnel gets ready for the fire. She takes the risk of getting through the wires and continues forward, while Adam takes refuge in the safe space. After going through the barbed wire, Lisa doesn't have any strength to move further. Before the fire can engulf her, the floor opens and she falls into another tunnel. Through the scratches around her, she realizes that she has arrived at the same place she started from. Lisa now gives up and draws the symbol from Adam's wrist on the wall in hopes that it will help someone else. She rejects the skull's treatment and the skull gets ready to euthanize her with her consent. As it is about to inject her, Lisa realizes that the marks on Adam's wrist are the left and right direction symbols to get her out of the labyrinth she is stuck in. She lets the skull heal her and continues forward with the help of the directions on Adam's wrist and her previous experiences. When she gets to the acid tank, she removes her bracelet to reveal the other set of directions on her wrist. She uses these directions to surpass various vents until she is again approached by Adam, forcing her to crawl faster. The two soon get trapped in a passage that keeps spinning, making it hard for them to move. But Lisa still crawls faster than Adam and notices her bracelet beeping with a purple light. She throws it in one tunnel to distract Adam while she hides in another tunnel. When Adam crawls away, Lisa realizes that she has sent him in the direction she was supposed to continue on. She hesitantly walks to the same passage where Adam went, which ends with a womb-like entry. She gets inside and feels the walls of the weird structure, and an alien-like hand touches her hand from outside, freaking her out. She soon feels the face of a giant creature from outside and feels comforted. She follows the silhouette of the creature into a similar room and finds her bracelet. Adam can also be seen crawling inside from the other end. The bracelet goes red and Lisa retrieves it before heading towards the tunnel for the safe space while struggling with Adam. She manages to get inside the safe space and flips Adam off. The tunnel doesn't release any fire this time and the glass panel opens up for Lisa to face Adam now. The two get into a struggle, but Lisa uses the power of her feet to smash Adam's skull. She continues forward in the right direction when her daughter's toy ball grabs her attention. Nina appears out of nowhere and starts leading Lisa down the wrong path. Lisa finally stops Nina, realizing that she is not real and apologizes for not being there for her. As Lisa goes back in the right direction, Nina comes to hug her and expresses her delight as Lisa is not falling for the last trap, remarking that they are proud of her. Nina disappears and Lisa continues towards the last tunnel with the sky opening at the end. This time, she faces the hurdle of three blades continuously hitting the tunnel. She notices that the blades drop at times of four, three, and two seconds, respectively. She manages to get through the first two of them successfully and gathers her courage for the last one that drops in just two seconds. She takes the chance to crawl forward and loses her toes as a result. She still continues towards the bright sky at the end of the tunnel, and to her utter dismay, the end turns out to be just a screen. 
Tired and hopeless, Lisa lies there crying, and as the tunnel gets ready to initiate the fire, Lisa accepts her fate with open arms. Just then, a bright light appears from above, and she is lifted into the air. She now wakes up near a beautiful waterfall, completely unharmed. Nina appears in front of her, and Lisa asks her if she is dead. Nina informs Lisa that her body has died several times, but she is safe now. And the film ends as she asks Lisa to live, and we are shown that they are in an alien landscape. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting that ending, but we want to know what you think in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please hit the bell and subscribe to the channel to get notified about when our next video is posted. As always, thanks for watching.